Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this episode I'm going to address a question from one of the subscribers and that was how do we add uh, JavaScript plugins into a Rails app uh, that don't that maybe don't have a gem? So I'd like to make uh, an alert button here. When you click delete, I would like to show a proper uh, nice little modal alert. And the, the library I'm gonna use is called Sweet Alert. And this one already has a gem, but we're gonna pretend it doesn't exist. And we're gonna talk about how to actually put the JavaScript and CSS files into your app um, if it didn't have a gem. So uh, for example, this uh, makes a little modal here when we click a button and we just have to run this code. And I've already plugged that in for these delete links. And so right now it doesn't work. Uh, when you click on these, I'm clicking on this, uh, it doesn't do anything. But you can see at the bottom of Chrome, it says JavaScript Suite Alert, and it's gonna run that JavaScript code. So we just need to download um, the source code for this. I've already scrolled down to the download section and grabbed the files. And um, if we open up Finder here, this is the Suite Alert uh, source code. So this one happens to have a folder called dist and it has three files in it. Two of these are JavaScript files and one is a minified version. So it's already compressed and ready for production. We're not going to use that because the app, the asset pipeline will already take care of uh, minifying it when we deploy to production. So we're just going to use the full version uh, with the original source code so that we, uh, when we have any errors in development, we'll be able to easily see uh, where that code was. So it's really simple to put these JavaScript libraries into your application if they don't have a gem. And that is as simple as going into your app folder, uh, which I have open here. So I have the app assets folder open and you can just paste them in and you can move the JavaScript one to the JavaScripts directory, the CSS to the style sheets directory. Uh, if that goes there, okay. And then you just wanna make sure that when you open up your application.js, it's going to require a tree um, so that we'll grab that file. So as long as you have this in there, uh, it will automatically be included on the page and you can refresh and click delete and it will run the JavaScripts already connected because it loads it into the page with the required tree and voila, that's it. So the same thing goes for the CSS file um, being in there. If you did the required tree there, it will load it and you will get this pretty uh, modal window. And that's all you have to do if you want to include a uh, a random JavaScript plugin into your application that doesn't happen to have a uh, gem. Now, I actually wanna talk about this a little bit deeper because um, this isn't the ideal way to do it. And you actually have a directory called vendor that is specifically designed for this. And it's rarely talked about and it's used way less as it is anymore but this is a directory for third-party libraries. Originally, before Bundler existed, the vendor directory used to save a bunch of copies of your gems in there because you wanna use the vendor folder for things you never wanna edit. So you want your app directories uh, and all these other directories to, to, to really just contain these files and plug in, or the files and code um, that you write. Those are things that you wrote. So inside of the JavaScripts folder, this sweet alert file shouldn't actually belong there because you didn't write it and you're probably never gonna change it. You don't want to change it because if you ever have to upgrade, you're gonna lose your changes or they will be very hard to merge in with the new version. So it's not a great idea to put them in your app assets folder because these should just kind of be available but they shouldn't be in this directory um, and tempt anyone to edit that. So what we're gonna do is go into the JavaScripts directory and we're gonna move this file into vendor assets, JavaScripts. We'll paste that in there and we'll do the exact same thing with the style sheets. So we'll take sweetalert.css 
and we'll move it into the style sheets folder. And that means that we need to now update our application JS and application CSS to, uh, to grab these file names. Because when we're looking in the tree, that's going to look in the JavaScripts folder and it doesn't exist in there anymore. And that's why you're gonna have to say require sweet alert dev and then you can go to you can save this and go into the application css file and then in here you can put at the top you can do require sweet alert which is the file name of the style sheet and then saving that refreshing the page it should all be working again but this time you have your third party libraries sectioned off in their nice clean vendor folder and that's basically what happens when you use a gem. It puts it in a separate place so that you're not ever tempted to edit those third-party libraries to override the style sheets or something like that. And that's basically it. Just make sure to put your um, third-party libraries in the vendor assets uh, folder and keep it as simple as that. Um, if it doesn't have a gem, I would highly recommend you making one. And uh, I think I'll talk about that in the next episode because that makes perfect sense as a follow-up. So uh, if you have any of those things that you need to do, you can first dump them into the vendor folder. And then uh, just making a gem out of it makes it easier for everybody to install and to upgrade and all of that. So you'll always know in your gem file then uh, which version of the library you're using. So that will be really nice to do and we'll talk about that in the next episode.